Brands are our contract with the consumer. In fact, in Unilever, two billion times a day, two billion times a day, someone uses our brands across the world. Be it Dove, Lipton, Signal, Sunsilk, Knorr, and many others. More than a dozen of these brands have turnover of one billion euros or more. 80% of these brands enjoy leading market positions. In fact, in times of recession that we face today, it's the quality of these brands and the value that we offer that become especially relevant. Brands well managed during these periods actually tend to do better. I've also come to realize traveling the world and visiting many countries that the countries where we have brands that are able to compete, to compete freely, the consumers are usually better off. In that respect, it's equally important all over the world, including here, that we take firm measures against counterfeit to ensure that brands can thrive, an absolute important criteria for overall competitiveness. The second one is innovation. That should not surprise everybody. Innovation in our business is our lifeblood. It forces us to adapt to the ever-changing consumer needs, to stay a step ahead sometimes, to avoid the commoditization of our products. That's why we spend over 1 billion euros a year on R&D across our six laboratories in the world. And I just had the pleasure to open another one in Shanghai uh, recently. Innovation is what keeps a brand fresh and vibrant. It offers not only the functional benefits, but as well the emotional, increasingly importantly, also the longer term sustainable benefits. In this respect, it is absolutely important that a country, any country, invests in its R&D and stimulates R&D, and that requires obviously an equal commitment to innovation as well, and to R&D and education. The third element I want to briefly cover is scale. Leveraging manufacturing or marketing scale allows us to deliver products at the right value to consumers. Essential if you want to be a mass producer and reach that many consumers to improve their lives. It's also an important multiplier of innovation. A product like Clear Shampoo that you sell here in the kingdom, we've been able to roll that out to 40 countries in less than nine months' time. And there's obviously a softer side to scale, which is the transfer of ideas. To get scale, you need efficiency. And here again, a country can help. It can help cut down the red tape, make the dealings with governments easier, ensure that products that flow in and out of the region come in and out very quickly. How long will it take to get products through customs is one important measure for us of being able to leverage scale and to be successful. The third element is people, and that, the fourth element, sorry, is people, and that should come as no surprise to any of you here. Great companies invest in people, invest in people for the long term, and Unilever is no exception. I'm very pleased to see that here, actually, there are many people in the audience that are either Unilever or ex-Unilever employees that have moved on to other challenges. Whether in training, development, or other support, we do take the long-term view of investing in our 165,000 wonderful people worldwide. In that respect, for countries, it is equally important to invest in the people, to invest in education, and to invest in all people. And diversity, in this respect, is a key driver of competitiveness. Don't underestimate that. Um, I, would, I would actually... Um, uh, disagree with the statement companies are leading, consumers are following. It's obviously uh, in some cases companies are leading, in other cases consumers are actually leading. See, what you now see is very clearly uh, the, the trust, if we like it or not, but the trust in business coming from what we've seen in the financial world has spilled over to business as well. And if you look at any survey, I'm, I'm just about to leave for Davos and was looking at some of the surveys, but the trust in business is relatively low. Uh, 
50% uh, of the people is, uh, don't trust business people anymore to act in the interest of society. That's pretty sad. In fact, 80% of the people think that CEOs of companies act in their own interest before they act in the interest of the companies. That's pretty sad. So we have a job to do, a job to do to be out there, but more importantly, to behave. Uh, if you've read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits, he says in there, you cannot talk yourself out of things you've behaved yourself into. So more importantly now for business is to behave right. So we have our responsibility. That means in the areas that we control, sure, you need to cut your carbon, you need to cut your waste and your water, and you need to do your job, but you need to go beyond that. It's the value chain approach I've, I've talked to you about. Sometimes it's business that takes the initiative. We've deliberately taken the initiative on palm oil because the consumers right now cannot move a country like Indonesia. Businesses are able to work with the World Bank, with the governments, uh, provide alternatives and move that forward. I firmly believe that. In other areas, the consumer leads. Very simple. The consumer has access increasingly, including here, to the internet. The consumer is, is fed up with the way government takes responsibility and frankly also with the way business takes responsibility. And they're increasingly empowered. And they understand with their social networks increasingly the power of the consumer. And you see the consumers demanding change. Now what is very clear is the consumer will always say in any survey, I want a good product and a good value. Lipton first and foremost has to taste good because it's an enjoyable moment and it has to be the right value. But if on top of that you provide benefits that are responsible behavior for society, I want to make my contribution. When we move to the sustainable tea with the rainforest alignment in, uh, on Lipton, some people thought it was a better tea because it was sustainable, but we saw the volumes going up 8 to 10 percent because people said it's good tea, it's good value, but now it's also a little bit more responsible. A brand like Ben & Jerry's, which is one of our ice creams, which is half a billion going towards one billion in turnover, is totally built on so co uh, corporate social responsibility in the sense of a carbon-free model and consumers, we do surveys, they say, yeah, Ben & Jerry's might be an ice cream that tastes as good as another ice cream, but on top of that, it's a socially responsible company. I'm going to buy Ben & Jerry's. So consumers increasingly are voting. In some cases, it's easy for them. When they see a detergent that uses less energy, they save money. You point out that they can save so much and they get the same cleaning, they'll go for this as well. So you have to provide the benefits to them, but the, the consumer is farther ahead than what we think. And by the way, we're all consumers, as a slight detail.